Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, Hello. relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things that we found going on in the world of Linux and open source, closed source, medium source, any kind of source you want to throw in our way. We'll just give it a big hug. And then <laughs> that's Joe Ryan. And that's a thunderstorm because it's becoming a tradition. It's becoming uh, a tradition. Like, oh, right, we're about to start a show. Let's make it a little yeah. dodgy. Aha, uh-huh, you can have fun. I was kind of worried. Um, you might have saw a thing floating around last week on the internet about a lot of the cyber power PSUs, uh, APCs were going pop, blowing up, catching oh, on fire. Yeah. yeah, doing the bad things. They had some um, pretty unreliable um, surface glue on them that had a bad habit of when it gets old, it oxidizes and did this nice little thing of becoming conductive, mm-hmm. which is bad. Yeah. And um turns out I had one CyberPower uh, PSU, uh, AP, whatever you want to call it, uh, battery backup. We need a better word because you just want to call them APCs. Or yeah, UPSs, yeah, right? I know. Yeah. UPS. And, <laughs> you yeah. Call them, like, yeah. what can Brown do for you? No, the other UPS. <laughs> uh, the, and I pulled it out, took it apart, and I didn't see anything in there that I was gave me any worry. But still, I was like, ah, be still, my little Yeah, heart. that is nerve-wracking. Yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> and that thing is like a, you know, it's big honking, but it's only good for like maybe two or three minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just like the emergency, like, okay, shut things down really quick. It's not like the two big chongas as I have. Yeah. Here. Not like our APCs. <laughs> no. That'll go um, 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> easily. Now, Jill is about to tell you, uh, Jill's has been kind of like vibrating in place because uh scale is yeah. coming up yes so yes the southern california linux expo is in just a few weeks uh, july 28th to the 31st in again just in a couple weeks it's at the lax hilton and you can find me at the linux chicks la booth number 602 or the destination linux booth number 901 and actually for all our lw LWDW viewers attending scale, you can use the promo code CHIX on the first page of registration for 50% off your scale admission. So yeah, that goes out to all our viewers. So please come to scale and come visit me at my booze <laughs> and all you the think things. you're going to be able to survive it, man? <laughs> oh my gosh. I know I'm going to sleep for a couple days after. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, it's going to be so exciting. I'm... I'm really looking forward to scale because, you know, I had been postponed from March because of the pandemic. So now we're doing it in the in the summer. But I'm just happy we're having one this year. <laughs> but I think it's going to so. feel good no matter what, because uh, we were talking about this in the pre-show. Um, you know, they're downsizing a little bit. And that, yeah. that's going to be better than uh, be better than. It's going to be more gooder than. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, English. more gooder. <laughs> um, than having it like spread out over a big area because this is going to be the first year people coming back in two years so see how the vendors yeah. and everything you know everyone's close you don't have to walk all the way over there or reorganize anything and scale is always a fun time if you can yeah. make it oh absolutely i am gonna miss that we're not going to be doing our saturday night live with linux gamecast because jordan's not here and um, but maybe we'll get him coming down uh, from canada next year jill's gonna miss it I'm not yeah. Miss it. Yeah, you're not. It's more work for Ven. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh man, it's like RNG. Like, please, can we just have a halfway decent connection? Like, oh, of course, the Bluetooth. Has, ah, finally. Yeah. <laughs> but it's always a good time. It's definitely. It worth is doing. Yeah. <laughs> I've been playing around uh, doing the thing I do, uh, sitting back, uh, like pay no attention to me. I'm just over here trying to write some accurate uh, technical documentation for hardware on Linux mm-hmm. and stuff like that, just to make sure that. When somebody gets something that they look at it and they're able to follow through and get it up and working without any guesswork, because that's one thing that just makes me grumpy. And I understand people like to have chats back and forth, but in forums, you, you're trying to find the technical, to, you know, from <laughs> something maybe a year, two years ago. And somebody's like, well, I don't have that particular thing, but I'm like, oh, then why are you replying? Uh. Um, <laughs> but doing a lot of legwork, something I tested out on Saturday got to start with it is uh i was joking around about a really overpriced sound card it's not really a sound card this is a audio interface this is the mm. army 
AIO Pro 30 channel 192 at the reference audio card is what RME says. You know, it's RME. And they're like, yeah, you, you can see how much lesser your audio device is compared to ours. Uh, these things are wicked expensive, but this is some of the top of the line that RME makes. This is a mastering interface of a card that you would want to have in a system. And um, I'm going to tell an interesting story about it because, uh, but I'm going to be doing that in the video. About some history with Army, about how they've been supporting Linux since 2000. And um, nice. even around then, this is what got, I got a good laugh out of me, Jill. Uh, not only Linux, Jill, I was like, when was Linux support? BOS. They had a driver awesome. for BOS. <laughs> That's like, cool. What? That's they wonderful. Did, right? <laughs> Inter interesting hi history with uh, helping out with things outside of the Windows Mac universe with RME, but uh, it turns out they released this and it didn't work with Linux and um, it irritated the right guy is what happened. And mm. RME's always been good about sharing technical documentation to get things up and running. And we're using it right now. This is uh, hopefully going to replace my RME 9632, which came out in 2003. Wow. So, Wow. <laughs> and it's still made today. If you want to watch the video on that, that's another thing about RME is like you can get updated drivers and support for the hardware made in 2003 and it's still being used. So this is, this is the upgrade version of that. I'm going to be happy to uh, share that with everyone later on in the upcoming weeks, but cool. we need to talk mm -hmm. about windows and Lenovo because a thing happened that, well, the internet wasn't very happy about, and rightfully so, mind you. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, from the register. Choosing a non-Windows OS on Lenovo's secured core PC is trickier than it should be. Now, initially, I think there was uh, quite a bit of panic uh, because a gentleman tried to install Linux on his new Lenovo laptop and just couldn't get it to run because uh, the latest Pluton-equipped laptop from Lenovo, it really loves Windows. Uh, thanks mm. to that secured core you have to go into the BIOS and enable Microsoft's third-party UEFI certificate. Now, Lenovo, of course, came out and said, you know, they should have it enabled on all of the Linux preloaded systems, but since this was a Windows preload, they didn't see the need to do it, to which, again, the internet's like, really? Come on. This is an extra step, but at least the option is there. But I also want yeah. to remind everybody, when you think about Eufy, Secure Boot, <laughs> that, why is that there? It's because Microsoft mandated it. Yeah. Back in 2012. This is a Microsoft problem. Now, yeah. take the good with the bad, mind you. Good with the bad, because, um, you know, that Lenovo, it, it, you can still boot Linux on it, and that's not going to be a big deal. But um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, you can't really throw Lenovo under the bus. I mean, they have to comply with the rules. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm, what, what, what do you think? I, I understand yeah. the initial knee jerk of like, okay, it's got Windows on it. Let's install Linux and can't. Like, yeah, I haven't going to dig through it. Yeah, it's a little hard. You know, actually, this does remind me of the early years of Secure Boot when we were dealing with all that and having trouble booting Linux on the Secure Boot machines. But uh, the Linux kernel fixed that. So that that has been no problem. And Lenovo has always been a great partner to the Linux community. And well, hopefully, I I think they should be able to fix this soon, or or work something out with Microsoft on this issue for sure. Especially since you know their awesome ThinkPads, which I have many of, are you know the Swiss Army knife for us Linux users, <laughs> whether Windows in, is installed or not. It's one of the most loved lab, laptops by by the Linux community are the ThinkPads. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> uh, I, I get the idea of the Pluton equipped security bits. I understand the principles behind it, but at the end of the day, you're still going to end up with Windows? Yeah. Like, yeah. maybe not think your clever plan all the way through there. But, you know, Lenovo's been in some trouble in the past, too, when they were doing that, like, uh, uh, key thing. Um, I forget exactly how it went. Some dodgy stuff. Yeah. Just type in that key thing, dodgy. Lenovo, you'll oh, probably find it on Google. Yeah. <laughs> it was doing some weird redirect. Um, but yeah, I mean, ever since uh, something that was initially an IBM brand, and now Lenovo's been spun off, and uh, we 
I mean, yeah, for all intents, their higher price stuff, mid range stuff has always been really good quality. And they do make some yeah. low end stuff that I probably wouldn't mess around with. So, yeah, don't panic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but if, hey, at least Lenovo came back and they're like, you know what? Just buy the preloaded Linux one. That's an option. That's an option that didn't exist not so long ago. Yeah. Yeah. Now, our ongoing saga, I want to thank Arthur, and uh, he dropped this into our show notes. We, yes. We've been <laughs> unintentionally covering this, but you know what? I like when a story has a happy ending, Joe. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So this is part three of improving the Firefox snap speed on Ubuntu. And the team has actually made significant strides this round. They have now a 50% reduction in start time after a fresh install of Firefox. Woohoo! So what's uh, there are, are two really huge significant changes, and one is that Firefox now only loads one locale at a time or one language pack based on the system settings instead of lo- loading all the language packs <laughs> to make loading uh, that makes loading a lot slower of the browser. <laughs> and uh, the Firefox Snap also is now. Uh, using the LZO compression, which has helped tremendously. And not only, na- well, not only that, the Firefox Snap actually depends on both the GNOME uh, 2004 and GTK common theme snaps, which were still being delivered compressed using the XZ algorithm. And so when they switched their those files compression, those modules compression to LZO, it also helped speed up Firefox starting. So that was really huge. And this change honestly doesn't just affect Firefox, but all uh, also affects the start times of all the snaps that depend on the GNOME and GTK snaps, including Chromium and Thunderbird. (laughs) So in, in their research of trying to make Firefox load quicker uh it it has the result of helping load all their snaps quicker <laughs> that depend on those libraries <laughs> it is kind of neat i mean you know we're talking about like a 50 percent reduction across the board with this and yeah do you know what to play the devil's advocate like a lot of people <laughs> why weren't we doing this all along but it's good that they're doing it now um yes now this mm-hmm. is something that you can go out and test because the latest firefox in the snap store if that's your thing, you use the snaps and you're down with it, go try it out. And it's that cold first boot that has really been an issue with snaps. Mm-hmm. With just like yeah. waiting and clicking. It was the first time I knowingly <laughs> encountered a snap one a GNOME system monitor. And I forget which version of Ubuntu someone will point it out mm. in a minute. Shipped as a snap and I clicked on it. And you know what? I thought it was broken. I had opened up top. Because you know what you're doing. Like, yeah. <laughs> let's get a terminal open. Let's say, are you running? Are you doing? And then it popped up. Then I backtracked. I'm like, why? So, yeah. And you brought up the LZO decompression mm-hmm. and multi experimenting with multi threaded CPU decompression, I think, in yeah. a world where good luck trying to find something with like less than eight cores or not eight cores, at least eight threads these days. And they're yeah. cheap, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ch- cheap. And, you know, Firefox, they've been improving Firefox for multi-core booting for a long time. And now this should help <laughs> take advantage of that with the, the snaps. That, that'll be really cool. And, uh, um, yeah, there's so much good stuff that Ubuntu now is doing. I'm, I'm so happy they're really focusing on desktop right now <laughs> with fire, the Firefox snap. So that's exciting. Here, here's what I think is... I I can get mm-hmm. behind this if they're going to stick with it if they're if they're eventually going to mold it into a desktop platform to distribute applications. But yeah, the same work is being done in Flatpak, and of course, duplication. We could always have that argument. But if they're going to address these things, they're trying, you know. Mm-hmm. But we're all going. Remember Mir? Yeah. <laughs> and it was a remember it was Mir and Wayland <laughs> we were talking about together. <laughs> uh, uh, 
hopefully, hopefully they stick with it. This is uh, I, I would go try the Firefox if you have Snap installed and you do have Snap applications. Definitely do yeah. yourself a service and grab Firefox 101 and try this out. But okay, mm-hmm. now I I also have to realize I got to think about it because we're anomalies, Jill. We're weirdos. Um, oh yeah, we we <laughs> definitely are. <laughs> In more ways than one, though. Uh, yeah. A lot of it, I think, to do is here's something when we got to get outside of our little computer bubble, which okay. a lot of us <laughs> are just not capable of doing. You know, I got friends, doctors, lawyers, mechanics, whatnot. Having a desktop PC in your house, something that you cut on and power off, not common at all these days. Not at all. This is not the 90s when every family had a, because, you know, laptops were crazy. But just about everybody in yeah. it has a laptop. That never gets cut off. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. always running. So I think a lot of people are seeing this through a different lens because, you know, once Firefox is open, once the Snap application is open, I don't close it. It just stays up and running. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's, it's, and then it slows down. Yes. <laughs> So, but what's awesome is, is they're actually asking the community to share, share uh, your benchmarks from your machines with them. And you can use the GNOME extension application startup time measure and note the times for the following three scenarios. Startup time after a completely fresh install of Firefox, startup time launching Firefox after a system reboot, startup time on subsequent Firefox launches. And then, you know, report them by submitting your timings on the known issues with Firefox Snap discourse topic with details of the release you're running and the hardware specs on your machine. So Mm -hmm. it's it's really easy to contribute to this one. (laughs) It is. No hard bug reporting here, just easy peasy. (laughs) And, you know, Thanks to all the brave soldiers out there testing snaps and yeah. the rest of us are just going to keep using <laughs> Firefox as a Debian package or an RPM or whatever, just regular binary until things change. But I'd love to see the progress. We need to talk about something that everyone's going to agree on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is going to be neat. <laughs> Interesting topic. <laughs> no one's going to have any problems with anything. Um, desktop environment resource usage comparison. <laughs> Oh, all of this is going to be in our show notes. Don't worry. Um, for Madden, uh, some of them use more RAM, some less. Today, in a rather simplified benchmark, I will check some popular desktop environments for the RAM usage. I recently came to see more or less old comparisons with various desktop environments and RAM usage. So this is what we're looking at. Mm-hmm. Who's on the field? Who do we have? Uh, now, this is access. This is all going to be on FreeBSD in a VM. Oh, mm-hmm. All right. All right. The contenders, XFCE, which, okay, so this is basically the pinnacle of desktop management and followed by a couple of uh, little side projects. Uh, like, I'm just playing around. Mate, we have KDE Plasma, <laughs> Openbox, and GNOME. Openbox does not belong on that list. Yeah. <laughs> Openbox is a window manager. Yeah. Boots fast. <laughs> it, agreed. Agreed, yeah. 100%. Uh, <laughs> what do we have? Our test environments, one CPU, 8 gigajoules of RAM, 128 megs of GPU memory, and a 30 gig disk. Man, there was a time in my life I would have killed for a computer like that. Much less a VM, and that that's a dinky little VM these days. Yeah, hey. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> so, uh, you know what? GNOME was added. The original version of this didn't have GNOME. <laughs> where yeah. Everyone went like, hey, where's GNOME at? But... <laughs> Uh, just kind of a list of what's installed, you know, with the terminal through our mouse pad for XFC, Mate Terminal, Kaja, Pluma for Mate, uh, Console, Dolphin, and Kate. Uh, Kate, I hadn't seen Kate in a long time. Openbox, Kaja, Gini, uh, Gnome, Term- Gnome Terminal, Nautilus, and Get It. I got Get It installed and everything, man. That's that's old man Vin's Vim. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's the Xinet RC RAM usage. So, Jill, who won? Ah. Uh. So who who won? Well, the the lowest memory, of course, is the FreeBSD text console. <laughs> so no, but who won was Openbox. Well, think about this, though, Joe. <laughs> but who's fat? Who's slowest was KDE Plasma. <laughs> okay. First off, 
get off my lawn time is desktop environments using a gig of memory a standard strikes me as insane yeah it really does yeah and today yeah even in today's day you know (laughs) and to what jill just said 97 megs to get to a console okay fine Bye. <laughs> if you say so let's take a look let's take a look and see what we got okay now we had a not we didn't have an argument over this we were like what xfce used 1.5 gigs uh to get up and running mm-hmm. which is ludicrous because you see this box over here this box over here is running uh xfce 416 debian 11 Full on DAW loaded up with, I don't know, 5, 15, 23 different plugins. How much memory are we using? Survey says mm-hmm. 1.13 gigabytes. So, yeah. I got questions in the um, testing methodology here. <laughs> yeah, testing under virtual machine. We were, me and Ben were talking about this earlier. I think, I think bare hardware is a little better on this one. <laughs> I don't know. Like on the broadcasting box we have right now, the thread ripper is usually about like 10 gigs with OBS and everything up and running. But typically, even when I boot one of these boxes, well, I'm, not, I'm not championing XFC like I normally do. I'm just saying it's somewhere between like 709. Like if you get a bunch of XFC goodies loaded in, yeah. or near a gig. I don't know. It's kind of strange. But, mm. but we need to continue on, Jill, because <laughs> unfortunately... The other one's um, Mate. Mate did 1.3. Again, Mate's wicked light. Joe, you run Mate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, in fact, running uh, Mate right now, and it only came up with uh, 1.5 mm. uh, gigabytes. And that's with, uh, right now, I'm, I'm broadcasting. I've got lots of web browsers open. I've got Discord open and uh, using lots of internet pipe right now to send a van. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I'm looking the running processes there i'm like i don't see anything that sticks out like it's a big memory hog uh hmm. yeah all right moving on moving on kd plasma <laughs> the rating <laughs> champion 2.8 gigs um yeah but i mean it's kd there's a lot of pretty in kd you know pretty don't come cheap plasma gel there it is right up top <laughs> yeah yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, eh, KD, gonna KD. You know what you're getting. KD doesn't try to pretend to be anything else. Then, of course, Joel's favorite here, the quote-unquote ugly settings, 614 Aww. megs of RAM. Yeah, open box. <laughs> open box. Old school window management, which, yeah. you know what, gets the job done. I always say Absolutely. this is... <laughs> uh, okay, we got Gnome coming in at 2.6. So what was Katie again? Hang on, we gotta have the battle a two point. All right, a two point eight. Yeah. Look at look at no being all svelte. Um, yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. It's it, yeah, and it's it's kind of funny because with GNOME it, it feels a little more cumbersome than KDE actually, um, but they've had so many strides with the latest versions of GNOME with GNOME 42 that it's really right. <laughs> impressive. And like Plasma yeah. Shield nomming up things and we can Gnome yeah. Shield nomming up things. And, but again, it's GNOME. It, it does all kind of fancy things that I don't need it to. Um, but people like it and that's good. Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of CPU timings. Uh, well, nothing. The, Go ahead. Yeah. The other thing is that there, um, he was testing using single core performance. Mm-hmm. Which is, you know, great for an X window manager, of course, like open box. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, the modern um, desktop environments, you know, benefit for the, from multi-core. So, in some ways, this isn't a really good, fair test for them. Oh, no, it's them. not, but it's fun you to know. talk about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it definitely is fun to talk about. And not to mention that this is only run in um, uh, 2D, not 3D acceleration. Right. So... Yeah, <laughs> you know, I I looked around on like Debian eleven. Um, uh, how many packages does it take to get uh, KDE or Plasma up and running versus XFCE, and um, just to see mm-hmm. how that correlated with memory usage? And it wasn't one to one, but you know, XFCE takes four hundred and seventeen packages. Okay, install yeah. to get that up and running. Plasma 
960. Yeah, 900, yes. And, and to this day, Strider doesn't understand what I mean when I say the kitchen sink. Um, <laughs> Everything but the kitchen sink. Guess what's coming along when you install KDE in live? That's why I'm glad it's an app yes. image these days. Uh, yeah. <laughs> interesting. Uh, share with us, send us a note, uh, some feedback. Uh, if you use something like, again, I question all of these results just by looking at XFCE and like it. I don't know what was done to make it use that much memory. Yeah, especially on FreeBSD, which is even more slim in a lot of ways than Linux because it doesn't I, I would load think quite as many modules. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't touched Net. I haven't. I don't even think I've ever played around with. But NetBSD, I used to have to tangle with occasionally, but I've never yeah. ran BSD on the desktop. I'm not that. Oh, cool. okay. I I actually have. In fact, I've won it, ran it with the the Window Maker desktop. Um, um, love that experience. <laughs> professionally, in my life, I had to tangle with the Unix too much and. Uh, a little close to home. Give me, give me some of that watered down Linux experience. I'm yeah, <laughs> and but, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm often running the X Window Managers on here doing the show. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. usually on actually Window Maker or Flexbox. I just right. wanted to run Mate today because we were doing this, um, talking about this topic and this project. So right, yeah. and <laughs> like you know, I, again, run whatever you need to. I know people really enjoy. Uh, the whiz bang and the integrations and stuff that you're going to get from KDE and GNOME. You yeah, got other people beautiful. that beautiful. Yeah. Give me a tiling window manager. Those people are serial killers, by the way. No, but- no, I love i3. Oh, even better. I like rat poison. Mm-hmm. You can like <laughs> you them all you I'm- want. No, 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 no. You can <laughs> you like them all you I'm want. Crazy. You don't, I, you don't have to have a mouse using rat poison. That's why it's rat poison. <laughs> Who uses a mouse? Yeah. <laughs> If there's yeah, a keyboard I'm shortcut, terminal. I yeah. know it, man. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's uh, the people who like... Ooh, I hear that thunder. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That actually sounded awesome. Thor agrees with me. Yes. Um, the, yeah, the people who like tiling managers are not the same people that have like, all right, show me how you use that in production. I'm like, I yeah. like them. Yes, yes, I don't yes. use them. I just open them and do that. But at the end of the day, as long as you can, I can open up a bunch of virtual terminals. I'm good. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm content. And it's a horrible thing because my dumb, my dumb self doesn't take advantage of tabbed terminals yet. So I got yeah. thirty open oh, okay. on different boxes, and <laughs> I'm just playing roulette sometimes. On am I even on the right machine? <laughs> you need a little Tilex action or some of the other uh, <laughs> tabbed I, uh, <laughs> consoles. It's a, it's a hot mess. Like what I was yeah. working on. Um, <laughs> getting the drivers compiled for this thing uh man yeah. then i was playing around and like i learned all types of things about inserting uh modules into kernels and security mechanisms in place more importantly how to bypass them um yeah I, it was nasty like i almost wanted to take a screenshot of shame on that because it there was no rhyme of some, i showed that somebody and like you're a serial killer too i'm like probably yeah. i don't know <laughs> um <laughs> don't kill your cereal kids it's not good eat it like a normal person so we're about to talk about a mac pie uh quick thanks to everybody who decides like mm. hey you like what we do we got a pretty crazy business model if you like it kick us four quarters a week a little bit more and uh, you can do that by heading over to linuxteamcast.com we got a support button with all types of ways to irresponsibly give us money patreon be the big one that's the way we're able Yay. to do what we do today man uh um, yes we got merch we got paypal we got wish list. If you want to pick us up something, we got a little game where you can type something on a piece of paper and we will definitely say it. And, uh, you know, Bitcoin's worthless. Send it all to me and uh, <laughs> I will convert it into uh, studio wish list things for everyone. But most importantly, thank you to our patrons, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's where we can give you a couple of bonuses for your patronage, access to our Discord. We got an extra hour long show we do each and every week, the pre pre super shows, and that's behind the scenes discussing things. And it also turns into, you know, topical pop culture movie reviews. That's where all that yeah. stuff goes. You do get Absolutely. invites to game streams. <laughs> but yeah, hop in our Discord if you're a Twitch sub. That's also an option. Me and Jill do a thing on Tuesdays and Fridays, our Trek Mania Filthy Casual series. Yay! And uh, that's just a good time to get around with fellow Linux nerds and uh, try to do a puzzle platforming with wheels it's technically a racing game but it's more about solving puzzles yes and um <laughs> it's fun uh we're definitely when it comes out because uh we'll be adding a uh, turbo golf racing but we do have a trek mania server right now 
and it's ours. Mm-hmm. It's nice and private, and we got a little channel for that. We can hang out outside of the regular general disarraison, but we also have IRC. We have live chat. We have Twitch, and that's all bridged together if you're typing right things. now. <laughs> completely free. Come hop in. Come say hi, and we will be happy to tell you about Linux. Or maybe not. I think some people are, are a little hesitant in Discord sometimes. Like, can we talk about like, talk about? Look Aww. at any any chunk of like thirty minutes in our Discord. It goes yeah. places. There's, it goes everywhere. Yeah, you know, <laughs> everywhere. Uh, interesting <laughs> eclectic group of people. Now, apple pie. Ooh, yes, definitely. Yeah, that that is an apple pie, literally. <laughs> <laughs> it is a Mac Mini. <laughs> oh, uh, in pie form. <laughs> here's a little bit of an aside. The uh, you know Johnny Ives, right? Yeah. Does, uh, they've officially parted ways with his uh, consulting company. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, maybe uh, we're going to get some interesting designs from Apple. Who knows? Something new. Yeah. Bring, cool. bring back the, uh, what was it? The uh, Was the iMac the one with the... Uh, yeah, monitor? all the colored, fruity colors. No, no. I was thinking like the all-in-one, you know, the one with the base on it, more recent. Do you know what that was called? Uh, the uh, recent one, not the Mac Studio, but... Uh, uh, it had the articulated monitor sticking oh, out oh, of the top Oh, 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 uh, the lamp. That was the, the lamp, G4 lamp all-in-one. It wasn't G4, this was X86. Oh, okay. Well, I can. It's the one that looks like you stabbed R2-D2 in the head with a monitor. <laughs> it's the I iMac. Guess- might have been the G4. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. I don't, I'm not the noted Mac historian. Yeah. yeah. I, it's nothing's coming to mind, and I have all the Macs in my collections. Um, Aw. <laughs> let me see. Poor Vince. He's going to look for it. Go ahead and look That's for it. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah. Because I know that would drive me up the wall. That's It's actually driving me up the wall. <laughs> so well, I can, I'm looking for at G4 Macs, and none of these are, uh, mm, hang on. It's the iMac G4. Just the regular iMac G4, just the screen? Yeah, see, that's that we call it the lamp. We call you can it call the lamp. it whatever you want. That's not its name. Yeah. Well, no, that that's what they uh, <laughs> affectionately uh, refer to it in the Apple world, and collectors refer to it as uh, the lamp map, Mac. And I have one in my collection, and it has the arm that swings out. And yes, it's a G4. <laughs> iMac 15 inch desktop. So, uh, man, yeah. 2002. Yeah, the e- exactly. <laughs> Nerds call it um, yeah. <laughs> lamps. I call it R2D2 stabbed in the head with a monitor. Okay. So we'll have to. And, and it, it doesn't feel like it, Vin, but it, it, it feels like that that wasn't that long ago. That so that's why you were thinking you were thinking it was something newer. Yeah. <laughs> and um, when did uh, Mac switch to x86? Oh boy, it was just out. That was the last in the G4 line. So it was just like literally that year, like 2002, 2004, uh, three. Yeah. I'm not looking at it. See, I don't care enough about that. (laughs) Let's talk about. Okay, we were leading into something. If you've checked out, you're like, why is all this Macintosh discussion? (laughs) Yes, there's a reason for this. Everyone's like, where'd you go on that tangent? Well, there's this awesome new project called a Macintosh Pie, and it allows running full screen versions of Apple's cl- uh, classic Mac OS 7, 8, and 9 with sound and internet via, via old school modem emulation on a Raspberry Pi. And it looks pretty cool. Uh, uh, the guy head, that heads this project actually uh, installed his in an old uh, Mac Classic shell. So. That's really, really cool. I have a Mac Classic, but mine's actually working. <laughs> but this is really cool to fit, you know, to convert it um, by putting a Raspberry Pi in it. And it runs without an Xorg manager and only needs a multimedia SDL2 library and from the CLI using Raspberry Pi OS Lite. That's all you need. You don't need the full Raspberry Pi OS. So yeah, installation. You can do it with the itsy bitsy. Little Pi Zero yeah. Two. Yeah, the little the little guy. 
Yeah. So, you know, installation requires running a single script on a clean Raspberry Pi OS Lite and waiting about two hours for the packages to compile and install. <laughs> and, I, and I was thinking, laughing out loud, yes, <laughs> it requires two hours. And yeah, as Ben was saying, the entire Macintosh Pi project runs on a Raspberry, can run on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, a Raspberry Pi 2, 3, 3B, or 3B plus, but not a four, 4 quite yet. That'll, you know, that'll happen in the future. And I was honestly, this this project is so cool. And I was so happy to see that it uses the Macintosh 68K emulator Basilisk 2, which supports Mac OS 7 and 8 Classic. And it uses the PowerPC emulator Sheep Shaver, which supports Mac OS 9. And I've actually been using personally Basilisk 2 and Sheep Shaver for, Sheep Shaver for years to run the classic Mac OS on my uh, Linux box boxes and back in the day on my windows boxes so it's it's a very powerful um, emulator and it works really well and geez i was able to load um, not too long ago i loaded up some of my old supercard projects <laughs> from from back in the 90s <laughs> so that was pretty cool and i think this is very important man because i know a lot of people a lot of the youths are looking around mm -hmm. kicking around looking for something to do and you know yeah like, they want to get into retro gaming, but let's face it, man, retro gaming's too mainstream, man. All the old people are doing it, the boomers in the retro gaming, all these retro gaming YouTube channels. You got to do something to stand out, you know? You do something different, and this is an interesting way to think different, you know? Because who's gaming on Mac OS 7 and 9? Everybody's gaming on the DOS thing, man. Yeah. <laughs> you could do the YouTube channel gaming on a emulated Mac <laughs> OS 7 and 9, the dark old 7 through 9, I guess I should say. Yeah. And, you know? Mm -hmm. You can get this thing online with a modem emulator, so you can do that video too. What's it like surfing the web on Mac OS 7 in 2022? Oh, Looking yeah. Looking forward to that. And yes, the <laughs> Sheep Shaver, the Power PC emulator. Love that it's named that. Um, yes, that isn't that great? <laughs> I found it fun. <laughs> so yeah, if you have, uh, you know, unfortunately, a Raspberry Pi, you can do it with a Pico or W or anything like that. If you wanted to get something more powerful, I was going to say the Raspberry Pi 4, Unfortunately, those cost as much as a Macintosh these yeah, days. Yeah, uh, they do, yeah. <laughs> quite unfortunate. Might be able to wait a round. I think you can still get, because I was able to get the um, Pi Zero 2W. When, yeah, yeah I mean, five, five dollars. They're in, 15, I think it's like $15, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 15 yeah. <laughs> uh, they're cheaper if you don't get the uh, Wi-Fi on them, though, I think. Yeah. Maybe. Who knows? I, I haven't done anything with it. It's still in the bag. It's a... Mark of shame for me. I'm getting it. I'm getting to it, guys. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, that's going to do it, Joe. We're out of time. Okay. <laughs> we got to bounce. Before we do that, I'm going to cut on some music. We're going to roll some credits and thank all the beautiful people. Awesome. Helping us make this. Yeah. Here they come in three, two. Aw, thank you so much Pie to sheet. all our wonderful patrons. And I want to thank them. Um, I'm not great at chess for the follow. Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 but we got our advisors, Omegas and Artharin, and Artharin is in chat right now. And we got our executive producers, Barbrant, Scott Ems, Atomic, Mike, Empty Drummer, <laughs> and our Chicago uh, patrons, Abstraction. <laughs> you got a thing, <laughs> and our man. Sea Monsters, Veritanuta, Justin, Frostclaw, Nubbin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't read them this quick, oh, Ben. Man. Um, for audio listeners, uh, they're there. Trust me. Trust me. Your name's on there. Your page. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Episode Justin. three, five, five. And you know, Arthur just yeah. watches this because he knows it's time to go to bed when the show's over. That's it. Yes, just, this when is the background true. noise stops, he's like, all right, time to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. But we'll be back next week to wake you up. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye, everyone. Love you all. <laughs> <laughs>